Hello and welcome to Berserker Bee Meadery. Today we're going to look at my favorite five things to bring to my brewery. But before we do that, you need to subscribe to my channel, like my video, and if you want to get notified about new releases, you click that little bell in the corner. The first thing I want to talk about is the fermentation vessel. We all need it for our mead, and they come in an assortment of types. In reality, you can use pretty much anything for as long as it is airtight and have room for an airlock. Let's have a look. This is a standard about two gallon uh, carboy. Plastic, PET, perfectly for, you know, the average mead maker. Um, it comes with a fair, fair size opening, you can buy it in pretty much any brewery store. And you would want to also have a rubber bung for putting in here, so that you can have an airlock on top. The airlock, oh shoot, I should have prepared better. The airlock looks something like this, I'll show you better, here you go. And its main purpose is to make sure that CO2 goes out but no oxygen goes in. Because, let's face it, after the yeast starts really get going, after about 72 hours, you want to have an anaerobic environment, no oxygen, and that's when the uh, yeast does their best work, converting sugar into alcohol. But if you're looking for a non-store-bought or brew store-bought carboy, you can also use a good old-fashioned water bottle. These are about one to two gallon, depending on what type you buy, and you can simply screw off the cork, drill a hole in it, like here, and you can put the gasket in and the uh, airlock in there. That's it. Or maybe you want an even smaller thing. Maybe you don't want to start with, you know, one or two or three gallons. I use one of these for my experimental batches. This is about half a gallon, I'd say, two liters in the Imperial. Uh, I bought it on... Uh, something equivalent to the dime store it cost me about um, I don't know two dollars and uh, I use there's an ear hole here and I put a small bung in it and a small airlock and it works like a charm there is you know when I want to tap it off I simply open here and whatever is left here from slurry simply doesn't get out so I can tap this more or less straight onto a bottle it gives me a fantastic way to test out new recipes. All right, number two on my need to have list is star sun. Never start brewing without. You wanna make sure that when you're brewing, everything you have is sanitized, sterilized, completely clean. And star sun, this stuff really works. Uh, I know they're changing the name for it uh, for some odd reason, but Ask your local brewery store, brewing store, and they will have it. Now, one thing that you need to know if you've never brewed before is that the star sun, it has a tendency to foam up a lot. So if you put this onto your carbon and you shake it about, you're gonna end up with a whole lot of foam. That's not a problem. This stuff is not toxic to yeast, only to bacteria. So Turn it over, uh, the carboy, or whatever fermenting vessel you're using. Just leave the foam, you know, try to get it out, but whatever is left in there, just leave it. The star sound foam will actually break down into edible parts for the yeast. So in terms, it's a good thing for it. So don't worry about it, but use plenty, you know, follow the recipe here, use uh, the dosage, and uh, make sure that all your equipment, not just, but just the carbo, but everything you are using to brew, douse it well and make sure everything you're, do, uh, you're using is sterilized. Now, the third piece of equipment I cannot do without in my mean making is the hydrometer. The hydrometer is a sugar content measure. What it does is that it gives you a great, um, well, measurement really, of how much sugar there is in your must. So when you here in other meat videos or in the recipes that you're supposed to have 1.110 or 1.0 of, uh, sorry, 1.10 rather, um, of uh, sugar, then that is, oh, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Um, 
we'll see if I can get my camera to focus better. There we go. Um, this is where you measure that. So the further down here on the scale you get, the more sugar there is in the uh, must. All right, so let's see if I can get myself back in focus. There we go, fantastic. All right, and there's also, when you buy them, uh, you can usually get some kind of uh, vessel uh, with it as well. I honestly don't know where I got this one. I think this is one of the um, stuff that got handed down to me through my grandfather or father. They used to do some wine back in the days. But um, you can buy this at any brewery store or brewing equipment store. So I will um, put in a link to some of this stuff in from Amazon further down in the comments. Now, before we move on to the next piece, I need to ask you guys, do hit the like button, do hit the subscribe button, and if you want to be notified about my upcoming videos, also hit the bell there. Now, we have covered three out of five items so far. Do hang in there, because at the very end, I have a little extra bonus tip for you. The fourth piece that I cannot do without in my mean making, and I assume most of you also will need this sooner rather than later, is the siphon. Now, what is a siphon? A siphon is a piece of equipment, more or less a hose, uh, that helps you transfer your mead from the primary fermentation vessel to the secondary. I will show you. All right, so I went to my little brewery and I picked up one of my larger fermentation vessels. This takes about 25 liters. Again, I'm not sure how much that is in uh, gallons, but I'm assuming somewhere around five or six. Now, if I want to transfer mead from this vessel onto a secondary vessel, then I need a way to get it here to the other one without introducing oxygen. And that's what we have the siphon for. This particular one is perhaps not the very simplest, but it's a very effective one. So I put it in there and what I'll do, I think I have to remove this one. All right. So this hose goes on to a secondary bucket, same size, maybe a little bit smaller. And in order to get the mead from one vessel to the other, this one comes with a pump. What happens is that it drags up the mead here and on the way down, it transfers the mead into this through the hose and it starts through gravity to pour into the next vessel. It's very simple and it saves a lot of time. And the most important part is it helps not getting oxygen into the, uh, into the uh, must or brew mix, whichever. Okay, so we have reached the fifth and final piece of equipment that I cannot do without in my mead making. And what is that? Air. What I do, I use a good old fashioned aquarium air pump. I have a silicon hose to it, I have an air filter to it, and at the very end I have a air stone made out of stainless steel. Putting this one in the must before brewing, when you aerate it after 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours, this helps a lot. I see a lot of people going around and uh, swearing to the shake the fermentation vessel method. I really understand it, but once you start uh, making quite a bit of uh, mead, you really want to move over to either pure oxygen, which I don't have, or a aquarium pump such as this. Now the thing is, here's the thing, if you're doing small batches, I really understand that you can go around and you can shake the fermentation vessel to mix in oxygen. But if you're doing larger uh, quantities, like you know, four gallons, uh, 20 liters or upwards, this starts getting really heavy. Check this out. This is a 10 liters fermentation bucket. Now I can fill this up you know, around here and put on the lid and make sure that it's airtight and start you know, mixing this about, no problem. But if this is a four, five, six gallon thing, that's heavy and you're not really want to be, you know, at least alone shaking this thing and stuff really can happen. So buy yourself either an aquarium pump, silicon hose, air filter, and a small 
stainless steel air stone, use that, or invest in oxygen with the same, pure oxygen. Okay, so we have come to the end of this video. Now, I promised you that if you stay through the entire video, I had something extra important to tell you at the very end, and here it is. If there is anything that has greatly helped me get really good mead, it is these two things. Go Firm and Firm Aid, they are two supplements for starting yeast off at a fantastic way, and nutrients for the yeast. Nothing has helped me that much after I understood how to make mead than these. These are fantastic stuff and it really, really helps you make sure that your yeast will not struggle, they will not starve, they will not develop these off flavors that can often come from stressed out yeast. If you really want to up your game, get these two supplements or nutrients, whatever you want to call it. The Go Firm, that will help your yeast get off to a really good start. I cannot understate how important that is for a good meat. The Firm Aid, you can buy on Amazon. You can do the same with the Go Firm. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you have any comments, whatever they might be, if you think I have overdone myself, if you think I've missed out, if you want to see something else, then let me know in the comments and I will answer you and I most likely will make a video if you ask me to do something special. So thank you very much for viewing and I'll see you next time.